and we're back again with another build. Um, so ignore the wheels for one second because they didn't actually come with the bike. But this frame set, the Diamondback Ascent frame set, uh, crank, derailers, brakes. I picked that up recently. Um, I don't know. I think it was only about ten pounds. No, it's five pounds. I think it was five pounds actually. I picked it up for. Um, and the wheels I've had. They're actually on the Cloud Butler because um, they've got the free wheel, not free wheel, free hub on the back. Um, so I'm going to put this all together and I'm going to actually upgrade it. So to start with, it's got this awesome marble blue paintwork um, and it's just got some Diamondback chroma tubing. It's a small frame so it should cancel out some of the steel weight to the bike and there you can see the double butted true temper eagle logo strong to be slightly different the front derailleur is actually top pull but we're changing that anyway uh, still going to keep top pull but we're going we're removing this altus a10 derailleur and we're going to put on something kind of special Again, the crank set is it's nothing too special, it's just a Shimano, uh, I think it's Altus as well actually, I looked up from the code on it, 175mm cranks, uh, three rings up front, um, but that again is going to be replaced with a nice special set. Now randomly, the bike actually has this nice Dior LX derailleur on the rear. Um, not sure why it would be a mix of Altus and a Dior. That is like top and bottom range mixed together, Dior being top. Um, but hey hey, um, that's coming off because I'm putting that complete group set on. And when it comes to the brakes, they're just, um, I think they're just Altus as well. Um, just alloy cantilever brakes. Pads still kind of good, bit of wear on them but they are also coming off. So let's get to it. Uh, we'll strip the bike down, uh, service the headset, service the bottom bracket, and then I can start to put all the new components onto it. And we're gonna upgrade the headset as well. So uh, it's not the headset, sorry. We're gonna upgrade the stem and everything. So it's not a quill stem, it's gonna be a head. Okay, so after that, here's the state of play. Uh, headsets, fine now, that was really nice and clean. Um, button bracket, I actually kind of, can I zoom in a little bit? I actually kind of uh, was hoping it was a cup and cone so I could service it. Uh, it's not a cartridge, 
It's a BB LP30, which means it has a, huh, unfortunately, 73mm shell. Um, I don't know the length off this, I'll have to measure it. Um, but it's uh, it spins, but it's kind of rough. So I'm gonna look at I'm gonna nip down the shops and see if there's a um, anyone's got one. Um, also, one thing I forgot I didn't actually check was the top here, the head tube. There we go, it focused. Um, it needs a clamp. It needs a clamp on there. I thought I'd just presumed it was a three bolt, um, but I actually need to get a collar to fit on there. So I'm going to go down the shops and pick up one of those as well, uh, and then I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so thanks to the uh, local shop, two wheels only. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, this is the old one. It's a BB LP30, which you recognise straight away was a old button bracket. Um, it's a 73mm shell with 119mm axle and they had in stock a U155 which is the standard at now 73mm 118mm axle so that should work um, and I've also picked up this Hope clamp which costs an arm and a leg could have got it cheaper off eBay but I wanted to get it done today so let's carry on So when it comes to the handlebars, what we're going to do, instead of using a quill stem, is use one of these converters again. Um, it's a quill to a head converter. It's a one and one eighth inch headset, so you use a 25.4mm. And I'm going to use this, which way should I put it on? I'll put it on that one. So that goes through. I don't even know if it's in shot. Wow, is that is that really that light? Okay, there we go. So we've got this converter. Goes through the top. Drops into there, and then does up like a like a normal stem. Um, that will clamp on there, and that will clamp on there. And handlebars. Well. And find the snippers. I've got these riser bars, and the thing I like about these A head headsets is if I wanted to change the bars at any point, all I've got to do is just loosen off the bolts at the front, and I can change the handlebars easy as that whether with if it's a quill stem you're gonna have to take off all the um, grips all the gear shifters all the brake cable brake levers just to slide the bars out whereas these you just undo this front front cover and away you go Helps if you don't chuck it running everywhere all the time. Jesus Christ, man. Okay, so when it comes to the group set, I've gone for something kind of special. Um, I was going to use what was on there already, but I had a look around and I came across this uh, period, like 93, 94 Shimano STX special edition group set so I've got the whole thing in there so that is going to go on um, it's 7 speed uh, we've got 3 by 7 got the gear shifters integrated into the brake levers so all that's going to go on right now
Okay, so I've missed out a bit of filming just cutting the cables and that. Um, I've gone for some white cables so it sort of contrasts. They were black before. And um, that's the front end all. Whoa, wrong way. Front end all put together. So I've got all the gears in, got the cables on now. Uh, tried to keep them as neat as possible because they are all top tube mounted. Uh, and then we go down to the centre here, and again, new white cables, all spaced nicely, the brakes already attached. If we go down, we just go down to the top pull front derailleur, and on the back, we've got the new cable, which at the moment is kind of awkward because that's a 4mm um, hole. For the cable to sit in and I'm using 5mm cables which are technically brake cables but they give a bit of extra freedom inside so the uh, cables can shift a bit easier which has worked everywhere else apart from there so I've just got a and that step down isn't really working that's a 5mm to 4mm step down but it's not very any not really any good um, I've put the old chain back on just for now so just for now um, just to get it working um, and I've got a six speed cassette on the rear Now this is why I've put the old chain back on I do have a seven speed cassette to put on brand new, I have a brand new chain to put on but the free hub on that wheel does not suit a seven speed cassette um, so I'm going to have to find a new rear wheel or a new free hub to fit a seven speed um, hopefully a 6 speed works with a 7 speed I don't know if it will I've heard that it won't um, but I'm going to try it that's why I've just put the old chain back on so I'm just going to adjust the cables now um, the front won't need adjusting after the rear if when I go to 7 we'll probably need adjusting again so we'll do that now Whoa, just, just. Voila, there we go. One out, complete bike. Um, so I have put the new chain on. Um, it is suitable for 18 speed, three by six. Um, and it runs fine in six speed at the moment. I've just, uh, I adjusted the derailleur with the gear shifter in position six rather than seven. And it works fine. So I can ride around on it as 18 speed until I get a new uh, thingy. What do you call it? Um, but yeah, it's come together quite well, I think. Um, I have just absolutely stacked it. Um, the combination of the old chain skipping and the rear skewer, the rear quick release skewer, not having enough grip on it, I just came down a little hill, put some power down and it pulled the rear quick release straight out of the, um, well, it pulled the wheel out of the dropouts um, as I was coming downhill, putting the power right down so I went straight over the top of the handlebars and I've uh, fucked up my hand and an elbow 
But hey, it's the price we pay. <sighs> Still bleeding. Uh, but anyway, the bike, let's have a look close look. Okay, so that happened. Um, battery died. So we're gonna look around the camera at work. Look around the camera, look around the bike at work. So on the rear, we got um, remove the Shimano Dior, put on a Shimano STX to match the group set. Um, do you do anything special about it? Not apart from the colours. Looks quite nice. Uh, up above, let's have a look. We've got a six-speed for now. Um, it's actually a free hub and a cassette, which. I haven't really seen on many old mountain bike wheels before, but cassette costs a bit. Um, it should be seven speed, but it is working a six speed for now. Uh, got a new chain on, new cables, the whole shebang. Up front, we've got the STX group set, triple chain rings um, uh, with a matching STX derailleur. Um, it's top pull derailleur, which is my first top pull. Um, it's gone together quite well. There was a bit of bit of tinkering to get them to change into the big ring properly, uh, but yeah, it's working solid now. Um, I love, 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 love the shadow chrome of this crank set. It looks really good on this bike. I think nice and shiny. You can see my reflection in it. And we've got the shadow chrome STX brakes as well. Um, what I like about these is obviously the chrome. Got some nice big pads on there. They're nice and easy to adjust with the um, sort of one piece bridge that's on there. Uh, so you don't have to do a wire bridge to the cable. It's just, uh, it's nice and simple to use. So triple cable routing on the top tube. Um, nice new white outer cables from Jaguar, Jaguar, however you pronounce it. They're all lubricated and it's all Teflon cables all around. I've uh, got the Hope seat post clamp and I've actually got a new 26.4mm seat post. I did, did buy a 26mm by mistake to start with, uh, but that clearly wouldn't clamp up. You, you wouldn't think 0.4mm means much, but it does. Um, it wouldn't clamp up properly, so that's on there now, 264 Clearly I had to put a charge saddle on. Uh, they're my favourite. I run them on all my bikes. It's a charged spoon saddle. Cost around twenty pounds, depending on where you get them from. Really nice saddles. Love them. Now I'm not sure I showed you this before, but it's got this uh, Tioga Avenger RX headset on it, which is actually quite nice. You saw me service it. Uh, it's one on one eighth. Um, anything else about it? It's cage bearings. It's running really smooth now. It's really good condition. And to go into that headset, we're using a, oh God, a quill stem adapter, because it should have a quill stem, and it's running now an A-head stem. Um, it just means it's easier to change over the stems. Should I fancy it? Should I want to adjust the reach? I said bars in the video, but what I actually meant was stems. Um, and I think that, yeah, that it, it just makes the bike look a bit better, I think. The old quill stems, don't really like them on the mountain bikes. Trigger shifters, again, uh, Shimano Dior STX trigger shifters. You can see it's seven speed. I've got it lined up with the six speed for now, um, and it works. Uh, I had seen that it wasn't going to work, that it was gonna like, skip gears, and there is a slight difference between six and seven, but it seems to be working. I rode it today to work fine no problem um, we'll see how it gets on it might slip out over time and become a bit more difficult but I'm gonna I'm gonna change it to seven speed sooner or later anyway and there's more shadow chrome on the brake levers really good condition um, just need to give them a little tweak in I think there's a they stuck they stuck quite well actually um, but they're just a, there's a bit more play than I'd like in them at the moment, so I'm just going to give them a little tweaking when I get home. But clearly the best thing about this bike is the paint job. I absolutely love this marble effect blue. 
Um, sure, sure, it's chipped in places. I mean, you can see it's chipped there, chipped there. There's quite a lot of chips on it, but it's it's worn. It's what it's like a 93, 94 bike, I believe. Um, so it's good. It's going to have damage to it, but it looks amazing. Whoa. Okay, that was the uh, tripod collapsing. Finally, okay, there we go. So there is my build of this Diamondback Ascent. Um, it's really comfortable to ride, like rode it today, really comfortable. I'm actually thinking of uh, racing on it. Um, Canic Chase. The shops kind of local to Canic. Uh, there's one in Litchfield, one in just down the road in Hensford, um, called Run and Ride. I've done a couple of their events before, and that adding in a retro category for pre '95 mountain bikes. So I think I'm going to have a whirl on this uh, in the summer, maybe. Uh, get used to it, and then yeah, take this out for a blast around the trails um, in, a, in a race scenario as well so yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes another one added to my collection so if you enjoyed this little build uh, I'd appreciate a little thumbs up that's always nice to see um, if you want to see more then please hit the subscribe button if you're not already stick around I have got another mountain bike coming up um, and I mean I generally tinker with Old, old road bikes, I guess, I've done before. But I love my mountain bikes, so I'm gonna tinker with a few more. So if you wanna see that, stick around. Thank you for watching. Comment down the below anything you'd like to see next. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video.